Kyle here from All Media Reviews, here to do the happy anniversaries for March now of 2024. The milestone anniversary is what it is. Um, on the eve or on the day that the new Dirt Pro Robbins album comes out, which I've listened to quickly a couple times, about a time, one and a half, and I'm liking, I'm liking more. I'll probably end up doing a review of that. I might even talk about everything, everything tomorrow. But anyway, we're talking about anniversaries from this month, coming month up to March 2024. Uh, and milestones from, as I've gone over, starting in 60 would be 69, 74, 79, 84, 89, 94, 99, 2004, 2009, 2014, and 2019. So on March 1st, which is tomorrow, is it is the 50th anniversary of the debut album from Rush. So it's kind of a big day. Tomorrow is sort of, besides being like the Mars, beginning of March... Well, the things with March 1st people do. Um, it is sort of rush day in some ways tomorrow with, uh, yeah, the, the 50th anniversary of their first album, the self-titled album that came out. And with John Rudsey, of course. Um, so happy 50th anniversary to Rush's self-titled debut album. So then, uh, that would be, then a couple days later, it would be on Sunday, March 3rd. And I'll mention one more anniversary, of course, which I'm... I've talked about many times after this whole thing, but the Antlers hospice album, their sort of breakthrough, it was like their second album, I think, Peter Silverman, uh, very kind of uh, melancholy, you know, art rock, melancholy, indie, they have elements of slow core, but hospice from 2009 was released, you know, March 3rd, 2009, so it's happy 15th anniversary to hospice. I, of course, I have a connection with this because I got into this. It was not when it came out, though. I know it came out independently and they got more distributions. You know, I have the CD, too. Um, but um, my grandfather, you know, was like 10 months later, 9 months later, passed away. I was really getting into this album when he ended up passing away, sadly. But anyway, happy 15th anniversary to, to the Antlers Hospice. The, the last great record. I like their first record a, a decent amount, too, but from 2009. So then we got... Looks like three anniversaries, um, that would be on Sunday, on the 8th, which is a week from tomorrow, March 8th. One being, these aren't really being done, well yeah, I probably should have put these in the order they were actually released, so. The first being, was it three? Yeah, I get thrown off by that. So there's actually, no, it's four. There's four albums that are, have celebrated an anniversary a week from tomorrow on March 8th. So the first two came out the same day, and I didn't realize this is another one of those significant, like, like Hot Rats and, um, was it 69 and Court of the Crimson King, which I'll be doing that probably later this year when I do these. The debut album from Kansas, which came out just a week after Rush's debut album, it's interesting. I always thought of, I don't know, I think of that this, around the same year, but literally the same, the next week. And then that same day, the second Queen album came out on March um, 8th. At least in some of the territories, of course, 2000 or the year 1974. So happy 50th anniversary this week to, to tomorrow to Rush, and next Friday to Kansas debut album, the second Queen album, the album that has uh, March of the Black Queen, my second favorite Queen song. So happy 50th to Kansas and um, and Queen, those Queen that Queen album, that second Queen album. Um, you know, a week from tomorrow. That same day, you had two other. That same day in 2019, so some 45 years after that, not quite as landmark or significant for, as far as influence, but still albums I really enjoy and a lot of people enjoy. You had in 2019 these two albums come out. You had uh, E.B. the Younger, I think this is Eric Polito of Midlake, to each his own, the debut album that has a very cool 70s sort of almost yacht rockish vibe. And then the first of two albums that the band Foles, the British band Math pop, uh, you know, art rock band, um, post-punk, dance-punk band, Foles. It's kind of a mouthful. Everything Not Saved Will, will Be Lost, Part 1. Uh, there's a couple tracks on this. White Onions and Syrups, I really like, On the Luna. Um, I like this one slightly more than the, the second one, which will be celebrating a, you know, a five-year anniversary uh, later this year. I think it came out like in August or September. But anyway, so happy five-year anniversary to, you know... Um, he be the youngers to each his own, you know, and the Foles album, the first Foles album of 2019. Every everything is not saved will be lost. Part one. It's just 
I think they recorded a lot of music and they didn't know how to release it, so they decided we'll just put it put them all separately. A lot of bands have done that before. They put two albums out in one year. All right, so then the next day, what did I do with that? I had it here. And I moved it. I moved it. Um, oh, I forgot to show this. I forgot to. Here's my copy of Queen 2, by the way, on CD. So, 50th anniversary on CD. The CD came out later. So the next day, that's next a week from Saturday, on March 9th, is the 15th anniversary of Pure Reason Revolution's second album, Amor Vincent Omnia. Um, a, a kind of a underrated album in some ways. I like it more than um, the, the album that followed it a little bit, Hammer and Anvil. I don't like it as much as The Dark Third, of course, the various versions, multiple versions of The Dark Third, but... The other thing that's cool is this has been talked about. It's going to probably get released on vinyl this year, so it's kind of cool. The 15-year anniversary, 15 year anniversary uh, they're going to put it out on vinyl finally. Um, very electronic. It has Deo Ex Machina and Victorious Cupid. Those were the kind of early singles they'd put out. But um, was it The Gloaming? A lot of cool synths. AVO, the title track or whatever. It's a love album. Yeah, I really enjoy this album. I think it over time, it, especially with the vinyl release this year, it might see some more appreciation i actually if i'm rating their albums i probably would put this still second i love the the two records they put out s since they broke up but anyway happy 15th anniversary to purism evolutions avor vincent omni or avo which came out uh, march 9 2009 so the day uh, the day after which they came out the day after on march 10th that that's saturday that's sunday um a strong local Minnesota connection for me, although I've always contended that especially these got this a couple other local Minnesota albums that have come out are as prog as anything, and most people that hear them like them. Greg Herrig is, which he later kind of named his band Tallura Currents, but the album's titled Tallura Currents, came out uh, March 10th, 2009, so happy 15-year anniversary, 15 anniversary to Tallura Currents. Features the songs Rama Be Good, which his dog, I think his name is Rama, <laughs> interesting, it's sort of progressive ethno folk world music. It's he's a fantastic the guitarist and um, you know he plays Turkish um, like what is it? Uh, it's not um, it's uh, it's not banjo, but it sounds like a banjo. Um, same thing that Kevin Gilbert played on um, Tired Old Man. Um, but there's a couple others that are just bangers on this. I hear uh, Sabir Khan's song. I think that's the one of the one other ones. I mean, I've seen them live so many times. I've seen these songs live. They're probably even better live, but The Moth is another favorite. If you like acoustic, progressive acoustic music, Greg Harrigas and his band Tallur Currents is definitely worth checking out. Um, but happy 50th anniversary to Tallur Currents, which came out in 2009. I remember I saw this, the, the CD release show, the album release show at the Cedar Culture Center. It was a really big deal. I was like, Greg, I think, is really gonna get I thought he was gonna really catch on and he did to some degree but you know I'm I'm a I love his stuff and he he did some King Crimson y stuff back in the nineties that um people in Minnesota know but you know just they don't reach up past that unfortunately. So okay the day after that that that's su Sunday the tenth. Is it Sunday the tenth? Yeah because we've had we've consecutive eighth is a Friday, ninth is a Saturday, Sunday the tenth. The eleventh is Monday Monday the 11th, so it's actually um, in 2014, and I'll state that I'm celebrating 10 years on YouTube. The first review I did was for this album. Ben Sinister, the Canadian sort of progressive art rock, pop, power pop band, their album Animals, which um, I'm pretty sure that, I, yeah, I concluded that. The two track lists, here's the vinyl and the, the, the CD, and the, the, the vinyl, unfortunately, was abridged. The vinyl didn't come out till later. I got it signed by the guys, but... Their album Animals from 2014 came out, so happy 10-year anniversary to Animals. And again, 10-year anniversary, that was when it came out, and that's when I did the review. Um, but yeah, so happy 10-year anniversary to Animal from Ben Sinister, Vancouver's own. Um, so that that's on Sunday the... It's Sunday? It's Monday. I believe it's Monday. I, I, <laughs> Sunday is the 10th, I believe. Yes, yeah, so Monday the 11th. In fact, and I got a lot of stuff planned for that day. I can add to that you know i got a list of plan for this big stupid 10 year anniversary of mine on youtube so then the day after that it's like consecutive days because there weren't universal release dates um the 12th the was it the 40 year anniversary yes the 40 year anniversary of 
Marillion's Fugazi, the second album from... So you have the 50th anniversary of Queen's second album, you have the 40th anniversary of Marillion's second album, Fugazi, which was released originally, on, at least in some territories, on March 12th, uh, 1984. So the same day... See, I, this is where I wouldn't... <laughs> the same day, actually, that's the 40th, you have a band that definitely influenced Marillion, especially on two albums later. Not on that album, but um, The Who. The Who's Tommy, 55 years later, actually. Because this was 69. Happy 55-year fi anniversary to The Who's Tommy, which was released March 12th, uh, 1969. So, you know, happy 55-year anniversary to The Who and The Who fans and, and Tommy. So, okay, and then was one more <laughs> that week... So that would be what? That would be on Tuesday the 12th. So you got those two. You got Marillion and the, the Who on Tuesday the 12th. And some of these I don't have physical copies of, of course. Um, but I do have this one. Uh, it's right here. Thanks to their manager a few years ago sending me these. The 13th of March, the, hap the 10th anniversary for Grimace, the Romanian sort of art pop band, kind of like U2 or, the, or ours. Um, Romanian band. Uh, the, the album that actually got me into them, 2014's Emergence, um, great record. It's epic. It's like 16 tracks, but it's some of the the the, the choruses and the, so the layers are really big. They're a totally unknown band. I mean, they're I'll, no no denying, but um, the people that do like them really like them. This is one of their best. It's maybe not their best, but I'd put it in their top three. So Grimace, Emergence, Happy 10 Year Anniversary, which came out. March 13th, 2014, so that would be on Wednesday the 13th. So then, uh, I don't, a few records, one, a couple records I don't have physical copies, a bunch of them. You have Frank Zappa on the 22nd, which is, again, looking at, I should pull up the calendar here, I keep on forgetting to do that. My apologies. The 22nd is on a Friday, Friday the, so whatever it is, three weeks from, t four weeks from tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you have a bunch of records right around that time of celebrating anniversaries. Frank Zappa's Apostrophe, the 50th anniversary of that record, the, the album that has Don't Eat the Yellow Snow and you know, what, Pancakes, that whole suite. Um, that came out March 22nd, 1974. So happy 50th anniversary to Frank Zappa's Apostrophe in a few weeks on Friday. Then the Saturday after that, the 23rd of March, you got a bunch of bunch of releases. Hold one, two, three, four, five. Five. One. I see. One, two, three. Yes. Yeah, so, I only have a physical version of a, a few of them. I think. Yes. Yeah, so, so one being the British sort of uh, trip hop, progressive electronic band Archive. Their album Noise. Their second album, I believe. I think it's their. No, oh, no. I think it was the third album. They had uh, Londinium, and then they had You Look the Same. The one that followed You Look the Same to Me, Noise, which has the Fuck You song and all that stuff. I don't have a physical copy, I don't think. I've always wanted to get one. I like Noise. I don't like it as much as a couple of the others. One of them will be shown in a few minutes. But it's still a good record, and it's worth celebrating the 20th and happy 20th anniversary to Archive's Noise album on the Saturday the 23rd. It'd be like the second Saturday of the Men's Steel Blade Tournament, I believe. That same day, the, uh, the 50th anniversary of the debut, and only really proper full length from, I think they're from England, the band Grammatics, who used cello really well, and uh, they were progressive, you know, in art rock, that kind of stuff. They're in that mold. Um, they caught on, they were catching on for a little while, and then they just, they stopped. I don't know what happened to them. I have one of their EPs, but I never got the full length. I should go on to Discog and see if I can get it for a reasonable price. Uh, but yeah, happy 15th anniversary to the debut full length album from Grammatics, which came out March 23rd, 2009. That same day, Mastodon. Uh, their album Crack the Sky, which I have a few Mastodon albums, but I do not have Crack the Sky. And I, I guess Push This Up is probably their best record. It has The Last Baron, which is the, probably their best track. Um, but that came out March 23rd, 2009 as well, so Grammatics and that came out the same day. Happy 15th anniversary to Crack the Sky. Um, so then going back another 10 years in the year 1999. Actually, no, I'm missing... I'm not kind of organizing. I did this alphabetically rather than... So in 2004, so yeah, and I'm going back. Okay, so 2004, along with Archive, you had Subterranean Masquerade, their debut EP, Tempor uh, Temporary Psychotic State, which is really good. I mean, I love the debut album, uh, Suspended Animation Dreams. Progressive Death Rock with, like, flute and saxophone, but it's 
Paul Core is awesome. The dynamics, the strength. Th there's this is really a taste of what would come like the year after. But this came out March twenty third, two thousand four. The debut EP from Subterranean Masquerade. Israeli, you know, Tomer Pink. Uh, Israeli, you know, progressive. I mean, it's metal, but it, it, they have like this organic, especially those early that release, this release, and Suspend Animation Dream have this organic, almost kind of folk rock element to them. <laughs> As much as they have Paul Core doing growling, it's it's a great, in, interesting, almost incongruous blend, but it works. So that's the happy 20th anniversary to the debut EP from that Saturday, the 23rd, to for Subterranean Masquerade. So then you also have the second Van Halen album, which came out in 1979 uh, on March 23rd. So happy 45 year anniversary to this album, which has Dance the Night Away. It's a lot of the covers I like. I like Spanish Fly, Beautiful Girls. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not as good as the debut, but I, I kind of shortchanged a little bit when I did my 1979 list. I still don't mind it. So anyway, the second album, happy 45 year anniversary to Van Halen 2, which, which will be on Saturday the 23rd. And last on the 23rd, so you're going to have like six anniversaries. 1999, you had Spock's Beard's Day for Night. The th would be the third, no, the third? Yeah, the third proper full length. I'm not mistaken. No, the fourth. Kindness of Strangers. This came out in 99. Yeah, they, they released like four albums in like five years. So, of course, I'm missing the booklet. I'm missing my compact disc, sadly. But this album, I liked when it came out, but I didn't know it. Like, it was the first album like that came out new when I knew them, even though I still was kind of not sure I was going to like them. But I know I listened to it a lot in 2000, 2001, and it really started to grow on me a lot. Um, it almost came to the point where I thought it was almost my favorite Spock's album. It has Skin is a great pop track, Day for Night, the title track, Gibberish, and then the Healing Colors of Sound. Uh, this this album stays with me. I don't know. I, I had this this and the Marillion.com. There were a couple records around that time that I initially felt like I didn't like as much, and then they just said, no, this is really good. Uh, it, I mean, it has it, Skin is poppy, but it's it's dreamy at the same time, so... Yeah, happy 15 or happy 25 year anniversary to Spock Spears' um, fourth record, Day for Night. I mean, it gets overshadowed by Five and by Snow, of course, but I it's the Neil Spock Spears. So, so moving on to try to wrap this up. So then, literally the day after, that's all on the 23rd, which is a Saturday. Um, the Sunday after that, you know, the Sunday of the second round of the, the, the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, it'll be the Elite Eight for the basketball tournament, <laughs> March 24th. You, we celebrate the would be the 15th anniversary of Falling Up's album Fang, which I think might be the first one they released that wasn't on that bigger label. The bigger thing about this record was is it, well, two things. One, Casey Crescenzo of the Deer Hunter um, basically produced it. I don't know if he plays on some of it, and it really kind of established a relationship they they would carry on just over to the next year because they're basically working on this and the River Empires together at that point, and then Jesse Rabordi end up showing up on, like, jewel cases all screwed up, on the color spectrum in 2011. So, like, from 2009 to 2011, Casey and Jesse were doing a lot together. Hopefully, they'll be able to do the River Empires again someday. Because um, they want to, it's a matter of just the scheduling. But, yeah, I mean, I guess for Push Come to Shove, this is my favorite. This has always been slightly my favorite uh, Falling Up record, although I haven't listened to it in a number of years. But uh, I find it kind of to be the most sort of progressive and having, you know, it, it's not as... It's not as post-hardcore, it's more... Yeah, there's more twists. There's more twists on it, and again, Casey's production is shown on this. I don't know when this came out. It came out, obviously, before Act 3 had come out, but he must have been working on Act 3 at the same time he worked with him on this. But So that happy um, would be 15-year anniversary to Fangs from Falling Up. So, all right, a few more heavy hitters. So that's on the on Sunday the 24th. Right. So then, four days later, which the, which is the March twenty eighth, which is a Thursday, Thursday before the final four, we, we're going to celebrate the twenty or the thirty year anniversary of Pink Floyd's The Division Bell. So, great record, the last proper Pink Floyd album. You can say what about the Endless River, but um, yeah, I mean, I love a lot of songs on this album. I mean, it's when I do my nineteen ninety four list, we'll see where it it show it it uh, shows up. But um, I do prefer it to Momentary Lapse of Reason, although I still like Momentary Lapse, but um, yeah, great record. Just you know, doesn't have Roger, of course, but you know, it's kind of the, the album that came out when I was in high school, March of of um, March twenty eighth, nineteen ninety four. That was the March of my senior year of high school. One of my classmates was a massive Pink Floyd fan, and he kept on talking about it. So, yeah, and then I listened to it probably throughout the, the next year, year and a half. I played some of it on radio, I think, when I was 
WRFW in River Falls. So, so happy 30 year anniversary to uh, the Division Bell that uh, Thursday the 28th. So the next day, we got two anniversaries and then one after that. Um, the 50th anniversary of, yeah, this one, yeah, okay. 50th, happy 50th anniversary on that, that, that Friday the 29th to King Crimson, Starless, and Bible Black. You know, the record before Red, you know, so this is the last proper four piece with the Wetton and uh, David Cross was still, a, was actually a member. Includes the Night Watch, was it the Night Watch? No, the Great Deceiver. Fracture, the title track. Yeah, it does have the Night Watch. Um, yeah, so happy 50th anniversary uh, in a couple weeks on Thursday, in like a month almost, on Thursday to Starless and Bible Black. And that same day, um, the, was it the 30, would be the 45 anniversary of Super Tramp's Breakfast in America, which was released March 29th, 1979. So happy 45 year anniversary to Super Tramp and with logical song, title tracks, so many great tracks on that album. So then uh, to close that out, the, the Saturday after that, Archive shows up again. So they've had two albums released in March in their history. This was 2009's Controlling Crowds, which I still don't think it's my favorite, but it's pretty damn close between this and you all like the same to me, but released uh, March 30th, uh, 2009. Um, you know, I even have, I think I have like a second copy or anything. I have like notes, but yeah, I like bullets. There's a lot of great tracks on this. When I do 2009 in how many weeks or months, we'll see where this finishes. And 2009 was a great year for music, but great record from archive. I think this was the, their most commercially successful record too. Unfortunately, they, they've been doing stuff in, in Europe and in the UK, but they haven't reached across the, the pond as much since this. But, um, Great record, uh, Controlling Crowds from Archive. And then they released, a, a, like, an extra version of it, like a separate um, alternate version, which Biffy Clyro has been doing that too. So to finish it out, um, 50, or it's the, not 50, the 45 anniversary sometime this month, but I am failing to actually track down an actual release date, which, which happens with a lot of these, but it's been stated on a couple of sites the release month was March of 1979, UK's second album, Danger Money, which I went over to 79 and concluded that, yeah, I definitely prefer this over the debut. I think probably because I'm not so much of an Alan Holdsworth person, I, I find that, um, yeah, I mean, it's more catchy, you know, Rendezvous, uh, Nothing to Lose. Um, not necessarily Bruford, Bozy over Bruford, but I think that um, uh, Eddie Jobson stands out even more on this record. So happy 45 year anniversary month, sometime the next month, March, to UK of Danger Money. So, so I have a whole collage of all this stuff up here, of course, too. So what are you celebrating? What albums are you, uh, you celebrating the anniversary? Of course, you know, five years from now, in theory, it would be the stuff that comes out tomorrow. And, you know, I might even slip in because it's not going to be a, a leap year. Derpa Robbins, Firebird. So, but thank you for watching. Please uh, give it a like, leave a comment, and uh, share it, and we'll see you next time.